I can I can imagine I could imagine in my mind like how I could build something and I think all engineers share this right like you want to build stuff right Welcome to Hustle Share the podcast that features the daily grinds of unique hustlers around the world to show not our differences but that our hustles are very much alike now here's your host, Ronster Bait Yong. Welcome to episode nine of the Hustle Share podcast. My name is Ronster, and I am your host. If you're new to the show, welcome, and uh, I'm glad you're tuning in. If you don't know what this is all about, and you just got here, Hustle Share is a podcast that lets you improve your hustle by listening to other hustlers. So basically what that means is that this this show was made not to showcase or just one up each other and compare things that, that, that to make us feel bad. No, what this podcast is all about is to make sure that we learn from each other's journeys, whether it's a success or a mistake. And what this aims to do is to make your hustle be better so that we can actually input what other people have learned through our own grind. So in this episode, it's very interesting because we're going to be talking to a very, very powerful woman. Her name is Katrina Chan. She is the director of Kubo Philippines. And obviously, a lot of startups know her. But if you don't know her, she, she leads an incubator that technically allows startups to, tr- to thrive by providing them the necessities that they need to launch their business. So I'm talking about a co-working space, incubation, and whatnot, mentorship name it and they probably have it already what's interesting about this episode is that people know of Kat as a mentor someone who runs the show in Kubo along with another um, powerful woman in Natasha and her whole team along with Butch Mailey but today what we're going to be discussing is how Kat started her hustle from you know studying in Philippine Science High School which is like the most prestigious high school here in the Philippines or the hardest to get through and how she transitioned to studying the U.S. and how she ended up going back here in the Philippines to start this mission and most importantly how she was able to contribute in saving Kubo because apparently it almost did not happen. So if you want to know more and you want to know the history of Kat and how Kubo and how girl entrepreneurs and startup Pinay is all about, we're going to begin the episode right now. Welcome to Hustle Share episode 9. Again, like what I said during the past a uh, couple episodes, we're going to be highlighting really strong women because it's International Women's Month. And for this episode, we have a very reputable and then like, you know, as it's someone we all look up to in the startup community because she's, she's, she's been out there and she's helped out a lot of startups. And without further ado, of course, I said it during the intro, it's going to be Miss Kat Chan. Kat, welcome to Hustle Share. Thank you, Ron, sir. There you go. Glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kat. Oh, again, and I've, I've, I've always worked with you for a long time. You, you, first of all, you, mad props for taking Kubo to where it is now. I was here when it was not like <laughs> this yet. You're one of and, our first customers. Correct. And I, just a little backstory on that. You're, you're the only one that took me in, right? I, I was literally, when I came here, and there were just like three of you here, I had nowhere to go because I lost my startup. I, I was, uh, that was like rock bottom for me as, as, as they come. And it's like, I was like, hi, Kat, can I work here? <laughs> <laughs> chatbot wasn't chatbot yet, right? No, it wasn't. I yeah. still remember you as from your party file days. Yeah, that was a totally different dude. But similar, but this is a totally <laughs> different guy, you know, in hindsight. But Kat, um, again, mad props to you because you've helped so many startups even just like, you know, a lot of what you do, and especially with your leadership on board, you, you don't know how much value is that. And again, from a personal point of view, without Kubo, we've, Chatbot would have never achieved. So this is home. This is always second home for Chatbot, no matter what it is. It's funny because whenever I, we have this thing called the daily scrum in Chatbot PH, where we automate that, it's basically a bot that asks 
several questions. Like, hmm. you know, what are you, what are you going to do? So even your scrum meetings, you have a bot now. This is now. automated. That's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. So at 10 a.m. in the morning, they, they, it asks several questions. First one is, what are you going to do? What are your projects that you're working on? And the most important thing is, where are you going to work? Hmm. And it, one of the options there is Kubo all the time. I've never <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, in the same way, right? Kubo exists for startups like you. It's literally a home, Correct. right? So we, it, I'm glad to hear that you no, think of this as your second, third, fourth home away from home. It's, it's, it's home. It's always, it, I feel home in the, in the essence of what you guys hear. So again, uh, like what I always do in, in my other episodes here in, in, in Hustle Share. Oh, I almost said chat. <laughs> this is not chat but share, huh? Um, Kat, what's your hustle? Well, my current hustle, as mm-hmm. you've said, is I lead Kubo Philippines. Yep. So Kubo with a Q, Q mind you. Yep. And essentially, you know, it's, it's two kind of big parts. Mm-hmm. What most startups know about is mm-hmm. the startup side of things. And that's okay. all about, so we're a, we're a public-private initiative. I think yep. that's what one thing that makes us unique and yep. Kubo is all about the Q stuff, right? right? So we encourage Q collaboration. We like go. to bring the people puns together. The that yep. come with it. The puns, all the puns that come with it. And this is like right. the earworm for the Qs, right? True, true. Um, we developed the startup Q community and, mm-hmm. you know, startups like Chatbot, you're one of our proud success stories. Thank you, thank you. And we run an incubation program as well. So, in, you know, and all of that comes with all of the different Q programs. You can find all of that stuff online. Quick plug, www.kubo.com.ph. Oh, there you go. You can't stop me. Um, no. But essentially, everything from Kulitans to right. workshops to basics. Again, if there's a Q in there, we're probably doing it. Yep. Then the big vision is really all about developing the startup ecosystem in the country as a whole, right? Correct, so. correct. And you've, you've been doing, I remember being one part of the one of the metrics, which later on we'll, we'll do a deep dive of what's, what's Kubo's mission behind the doors. Mm. Yeah, when, when, when the blinds are down <laughs> and then the people, the startups outside, what, what is it like? I mean, you don't have to go to the details, but what is expected and what, what this, what's Kubo's mission and what are the metrics and all that. But before that, we have this uh, hustle share time machine that we have here. The right? time machine. Yes, we have it. It was born a couple episodes ago where we literally go back and talk about your hustle when you started your career? Because from what I know, I mean, we always talk about meaningful conversations, especially when cigarettes, when I was still smoking, that was was a big help, but it doesn't matter. Uh, You were pretty, you're an achiever early on. And you you were just like killing it uh, back back then. So from what I know, you studied high school and then Philippine Science High School. I did. You, you did your research. Of course. I'm a, I'm a stalker like that. No, but I just remember. <laughs> so, right. so we're going that far back in yep, the time machine. Yep, the time machine, machine yes. So in my pre-puberty days or okay, something. There you like, go. Okay. Um, yeah, that's right. So actually, like, I, I grew up in the Philippines, right? Yeah. I went to Philippine Science High School. That was yep. actually like a transformative time for me. I can't even imagine that I'd be doing what I do now if yeah. it didn't... I mean... One thing about Philippine science, right? I think most people think of it as like just crazy nerd school, right? Yep. But and that's probably a fair thing to say, quite <laughs> frankly. <laughs> I wouldn't actually consider myself a traditional okay. nerdy nerd, but okay. you know what did strike me, and I think I carry it with me up to today, right? Like mm-hmm. Philippine science for me represents like what a uh, true meritocracy almost is Absolutely. all about. Like right. so, I mean. I guess for people who know me, I guess I kind of come from a... I'm, I'm very lucky. I come yeah. from a privileged sort of upbringing, yep. like yep. a, you know, a relatively, you know, easy, like, life path. Right? Sure, but the hustle for you, you, you I've seen, I, I know a lot of privileged people, mm. but there's not a lot of privileged, smart-ass motherfucking people, <laughs> right? See, because for you, that's the hustle that it takes to even be qualified... To go to Philippine science, you need to be creme de la creme. Your top best. I mean, you need to put the work in, right? right? At the end of the day, right? Like there, it's it's really like that's where you see, right? Where it's like it's not just about what's given to you or what the, what True. opportunities you have, but it's really what you make of it. And mm-hmm. also, again, like that was the time where I think. I started to fall in love with the Philippines and yeah. r- the real Philippines almost yeah. where I could see people that, you know, really worked so hard and like had, you know, 
like the talent was there, right? Yeah. Like the smarts were there, but like Crazy smart you know thing. what a difference it could make if you had access to sort of opportunities. Exactly, right? and I've like, been there once. I remember there's this one talk I did before mm-hmm. in Pisay. Some I forgot who who invited me over. So it was, it was in a far enough room, and in between the rooms. I can see like Dexter's laboratory stuff. Like what the <laughs> High hell? High school kids doing yeah, it too, right? What is going on? That's crazy. When I was in Philippine science, yeah. it was literally like everyone, right? Like you would you'd be sharing the same classes and being yeah. barcadas with people right. from the province, with like you know people coming from all walks of life. You know, right. it was also I came from like an all girls school. I think that's really typical. Oh, and okay. That was like my first co-ed experience. There, oh, there you okay. go, right? Boys, so, boys. in high school. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean boys too, right? Like oh my god, girls, you know. So yeah. I think it's really interesting. Like for me, that really changed my whole perspective on yeah. you know how I, I always i mean i think growing up the way i did you think your life is just gonna kind of go in a certain direction sure, right you and have like, no idea right? yeah and i think this really you know that experience really changed a lot of things for me it also you know it's also competing against like you right. know the best of the best yeah. in a way right and like, it's funny because earl mentioned uh that you know from from he he studied in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And the way the the, the 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 grading or how you're ranked is different because we're talking about percentiles. Now just shed some light, cat, for for those people who just have no idea, because you know there's always this 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 stigma, you know, that nerds are totally different. They're usually, you <laughs> nerds know, nerds are um, people too. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> they they get they're the ones who get bullied all the time in high school, especially in a normal like high school where there's a mixed bag, right? But for you to qualify in a Philippine science high school. What does it take? And what's the hustle behind behind that? Because if you're a slob in elementary, <laughs> you didn't really do your shit, right? You didn't hustle your way. Good luck trying to get a feel of Philippine science. So what's what's the metric for you to qualify to be Pisay? So in Philippi- at least in my time, I'm not sure if this has changed, okay. but it was really all about like how you did in certain tests, like to get in, right? Okay. So that's the that's the beauty of it, and this was something I appreciated also when I started with Idea Space, and I'll get to that later, sure. right? It's what, it was like, they didn't care who your parents were or like yes. what you did. It was really just like what you brought to the table, what your grades so were. A level playing field. It was totally a level playing field, yeah. and again, like, I think getting into it, I, w- I guess I was kind of mature earlier on, okay. like, you know, I was partying when I was in like, I don't know, late middle school. Now that I think wow. about it, it's kind of cringy, right? <laughs> yeah, but, right, um, right. But, you know, your priorities there are totally different, right? It's sure. really just about, like, what you deliver and what you bring to the table. Right. Like, you know, if you can compete. And, like, we're always thinking about, um, you know, not just, like, in the Philippines, but, yeah. you know, going through these yeah, sort of yeah. representing the Philippines. Yeah. And they're in a scholar ng bayan, right? Exactly. Like, that's something that's ingrained. Pre-UP. In, and yeah. you're, like, creme de la creme, like what I said. Exactly. So, you know, it's, again, like... There, when you're in, when when I was in Pisa, it didn't matter. Like none of the other sure. things mattered. It was really just about like your output and like what you were doing, right? And okay. I think it's crazy also and like interesting to be in an environment with where other people felt the same way. True, right? so, true. And you're 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 in your tribe that you don't get discriminated on mm-hmm. because you're not being smart shamed and right. whatnot. And now it's, I mean, I think it's changing, right? Like nerds are becoming kind of cooler with all True. of the kind of founders like yeah. you, like exiting and all of these things. But it definitely wasn't like that even, I don't know, like a decade ago or something. Absolutely. Right? It's so. a dif- dif- different thing. But I wasn't considered a nerd back then. I was a jock. I was a, a total jock. asshole when I was <laughs> in high school. And here's a shed some of how much of a jock I was. Not because I was a total dick, right? But... I graduated high school with an average conduct rate of 74. The passing rate is 75. Isn't that usually like, oh, like, isn't that usually the easy thing, right? To get the conduct yeah, rate Yeah, because I, I always got in trouble because I was a class clown and I was make fun of my professors and, you know, I was a varsity player for, you know, and varsity players have a totally different wired. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they, they're wired differently because they know that at the end of the day, right, as long as I play good well and we were, we're winning, they, the teachers has got that. So. But I mean, okay, yeah. I mean, just to kind of put this in perspective, right. it's still high school, right? True. Like, school. you know, <laughs> people still did their prom proposals and yeah. there were still jocks and yeah. things like that. But, you know, again, it, it definitely just sort of broadened my perspective of what was going right. on in the rest of the country. And I think that was pretty transformative for me, honestly. Okay, yeah. cool. Now, Cap from Pisay, this is where I, I now want to know because I have no idea what happened. <laughs> Pisay, where did you go to college and how did that trickle to idea space or do your career now? 
Okay, yeah. So from Philippine Science, so in typical nerd fashion, okay. I actually got like a bunch of scholarships to okay. go to UP and Atene and all these things. But right. honestly, like I always kind of, I guess I don't know why I make my life difficult for myself, but I decided <laughs> I... I like wanted to stu- yeah, I wanted to study abroad. So oh. yeah, so I actually attended uni at Carnegie Mellon University Carnegie in the US. Yeah. Wow. So that's where I ended up. Like, you know, there was a point where I was just deciding where I wanted to go yeah. to school, but like a big part of me really just wanted to also see how I could, you know, develop on my own as a person, right? True, Move true. away from home, you know, yeah. like that was my first Be time doing that. Be that. independent, yeah. And then and I mean as much as I love like my PSI classmates, like so, you're required to do like an engineering degree or ah, no STEM course, so right? STEM so, now, like, yeah. You know, right. So I, I don't know if the, again. There's like some I don't even know if this is real, right? But there's like some COA thing where you're if you don't do it, like yeah. they make you sign this contract oh, really? when you're like a kid, yeah, like Shit, that you're gonna do that you're okay. gonna pursue a career in the sciences and things like that. Okay. So, so inevitably, if I'd gone to UP, which is where most people yep. from PSI yep. go. Like, um, I don't know, like most of your classmates, you'll probably know like at least half of them. So I just felt like also I wanted a change. Sure. And I guess from a logistics perspective, so at the time my parents lived super close to like Ateneo and UP, like that whole area. I just, it it was way too close to home almost. (laughs) So I literally like picked like the farthest place I could go almost. Right. Yeah. So what was that like? So a lot of us, you know, Earl shed a little bit of light of how that was like when he studied BU. Mm. Right? Now, from a college point of view, where again, you said you're, you're pretty comfortable here, and now you're alone. Were you totally alone? How was college like from the studies point of view? How is the competition different? Mm-hmm. And then how is the coping side different as, as being uh, a student in, in, in the States? I mean... I loved it, honestly. Right. I mean, I think it's because I wanted it, right? Like, yeah. there's a... Th- so, I mean, so to answer your question, basically, I moved out there completely by myself. Like, wow. Yeah, I didn't have family in that yeah. part of the U.S. And I think that was... Um, that was also intentional. Like, again, yeah. I really wanted to have the full college <laughs> experience. Sure. I mean, I wanted to validate, like, you know, with what I see on TV with, okay. like, the Greek parties and okay. things like that were real. Okay. So, um, so yeah, I, I lived by myself. I mean, we were required to kind of stay in the, in the school, the uni dorms, like, okay freshman year yep. but then after that i moved out like and got this like cool loft apartment nice. with like one of my friends and, yeah it was there you go um so yeah so in terms of the competition though like that was com- that was totally different right like i think um how do i say this so first of all i was only like fob like fresh off the boat filipino sure, in sure. my in my year, I think, if I'm not mistaken, right? So there weren't that many Pinoy's. True, true. It wasn't like I was in the community or anything like that. There were lots of like, I don't know, like Chinese or Korean immigrants. It's a melting pot, right? Yeah. Yeah. But um, not so many Pinoy's, right? And I felt, I did... I did feel like I had something to prove, to like represent, Mm. you know? Like, I say this a lot, right? But I, whenever I say I'm from the Philippines, like the association is always... In my view, it's not negative necessarily, but I feel Borderline bad. Discrimination? Yeah, that like, like no? I feel bad that when people think of Philippines, it's it's a positive uh-huh. association, but it's never about something that's like about and, being excellent at and something. The academe and yeah, it's okay. it's. I mean, it's like about our singers and our yes. you know our Manny Pacquiao's yes. or like our <laughs> yeah. you know, or like my my nanny was Filipina and I right. really bonded with her that sort of thing, right. right? But it was hardly ever about like, oh yeah, like Pinoy's are really smart or rocking it at this particular field, or my boss was yeah. Pinoy, like that. And it's kind the of same thing. same ex- till now in, in business, right? Um, I, I often get this in Singapore. Uh, again, I'm just, just trying to speak for experience. Like, oh yeah, he's Filipino, and then some while you're catching up, they're also going to be talking about their household help, mm. which happens to be Filipino. Filipino. It's like, there's a side of me like, yeah, I'm proud to be here, but that sucks that my kababayan. Or it's is- always like, right. uh, there's almost shock, right? Like, I, I, how do I say, like, when I say you're f- I'm from the Philippines and I'm doing yeah. X, Y, Z, it's like, oh, you're from the Philippines? Like, I didn't know, like, people in the Philippines. Exactly. Like, 
can do this. And I'm like, yes, of course. There are so many smart, Filipino. amazing the Filipinos. The Dado Banatos, yeah, the exactly. Winston Demarios, so, who were like there. And I'm, I'm sure it's it's usually well-intentioned. It's not yeah. like, you know, they're hating on it or right. anything. But, you know, for me, that was definitely something that I was quite conscious of, like, right. when I was there. And then, of course, it's tough, right? Like, I think here, I was kind of... I mean, without trying too hard, I feel like it sure. was okay. Like, you know, I did pretty well. Like, okay. there it was, again, you're competing again in a whole different right, level, right, right? right? Like, from, you know, students that hailed from, like, every country you could true, imagine, true. that sort of thing. And then I, I, I was taking on, like, a... I was doing a double major. Wow. In what would you pick up if you don't mind me? I never. Yeah, I, so I, I double majored in materials engineering and business. Holy shit. I was actually thinking of doing like a couple of minors too, but then I just oh, really wanted my. to like have more fun, I guess. So, um, so of course, major. yeah. So that was kind of like just like the mental load of like shit. doing all that, but still, like, again, really important to me that I had an authentic college experience. Right? And I think so, you yeah. achieved that there. Yeah. <laughs> so. But I mean, that wasn't easy, right? Like, I mean, sure. looking back now, I can sort of laugh at it. But right. definitely, like, you know, being by yourself, like, having, like, this course load and doing all this yeah, stuff, yeah. like, you know, that's hustle, and right? Was, absolutely. And that's <laughs> being responsible for your, for decisions that you make mm-hmm. and how you manage your time. And again, having double majors and at the same time, ha- have fun at the side. Right. That's a totally different thing. Now, what was the, when did you come back? After college or like, what, what did you come yeah, back? Yeah, I, I came back like short. I mean, I would come back for like vacation and sure. things like that, right? But then, so right after college, I was, I mean, long story short, I was I was working and things like that. But I was sure. also thinking about like a, an eat, pray, love kind of, you know, yeah. moment. Like okay. I was, I was tired, right? Okay. Like, you know, and I'd kind of, I'd done it. So okay. um, anyway, like a couple of things, right? So Basically, I came home um, for Christmas, I think, or okay. one of the holidays, and right. it was, it was kind of jarring to me, like what I'd missed. It it was almost like ah. I saw how many cranes there were. I think on Edsa, that was like wow. the moment that it okay. clicked for me, where it was like, right. holy crap, like yep. stuff's happening here, yeah. right? You can and, cuss, cat. <laughs> <laughs> You can say shit. You can say, you can, you can say whatever. Right. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was shocked, right? Like, you know, th- I think there's always this sort of mentality, like it's the grass is always greener, kind of stuff, Absolutely. right? Yeah. And like the writing that, that was, was on the wall. Yeah. And you like see it I everywhere. could I could like it's not it wasn't just like a you know the numbers showed it kind yeah. of thing, but it was yeah. like I could physically palpable, feel and right. see it, right? It was palpable. Right. Um, and the other thing was like. And I guess I was I was I was deliberating, right? If I sure. wanted to work in the U.S. or Europe or like cool. do whatever, right? Like, um, and honestly, it was kind of tough in the U.S. at the time, right? Like True. that financial was crisis, yeah, financial crisis. Like I was kind of recession. I w- I'd done sort of my internships in the sort of i banking side of things, so mm. I was definitely thinking like entering that industry was definitely kind of tough, right? Like, okay. I don't know, like I. I you got this sort of sense also that like you know it's not true now like unemployment there's really good now right but um back then it was like you know you're taking away jobs from like local people who are you like getting a visa was like i I know like pinoy struggle with this whole visa issue but so i had like um i think all if you graduate from like a you know, a quant course or something. Sure. You can you can work in the U.S. for like two years, right? So but that that's was, it. Like, you, but that's yeah. it. After that, you're like perpetually sort of begging, like, for Correct. an for employer. Card, yeah, card. like, please employ me, right? And like, sure. whereas here, like, I mean, this is a typical millennial answer, right? Yeah. Like, I can make stuff happen here, sure. you know? Like, and I, it's I'm a not. Blue I don't ocean. To, yeah, right. I don't have to, and I, I'm. I don't have to. And maybe it's a pride thing. Like, I don't have to beg for you to give me Correct. a job. Like, I can. I can I can imagine I could imagine in my mind like how I could build something and I think all engineers share this sure. right like you want to build stuff right and, and the opportunities are there exactly right so okay now Kat let's take a quick break after mm-hmm. the break we will be discussing what's that thing that you wanted to build and what was the next step after this all right sounds More good that after the break hey do you guys like what you're hearing so far if you do Please don't forget to show us some love and subscribe to Hustle Share on your favorite podcast app. You can listen to us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, 
and all the other major podcast apps. Also, if you want to get in touch with us and suggest the next hustlers you want to hear in the show, please do messages on our chatbot on Messenger. Just search Hustle Share or go to m.me slash hustle share powered by chatbot ph. And lastly, if you want to know more about the details and resources we discussed during each episode, please go to our show notes at hustleshare.com. Cool? All right, back to the show. Welcome back from the break. Uh, we're still with Kat Chan. Kat, how are you doing so far? Really good. All right. So, that's good. so again, we on the first part, we took, took you all the way back with the time machine. We're going to go... <laughs> Uh, not used to this actually right. yeah because that's what we do i mean we have the hustle share time machine i should probably trademark that <laughs> <laughs> and then or put a proper like how how does that like the delorean and everything like <laughs> yeah probably i'll probably be a tesla so it's like a renewable renewable so right keep it green yeah and more 21st century <laughs> <laughs> that delorean would be probably conky as hell right now right and marty mcfly is old as shit right so okay cat what you before the break you you said your hustle pre-work pre-work and yeah. before pre going back to the philippines so now you're back how did you transition or what was your first job and what, how did you transition to now like going to idea space in kubo so actually like idea space was one of the first volunteer gigs that i did oh, like, volunteer. i was a volunteer there like when it was brand new, like they didn't have an office yeah, or anything. Yeah, yeah. So Earl, who I believe you've had on your yep, podcast, ep- right? Yep. Episode. I forgot. <laughs> episode something. Yeah. Um, episode so, three, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. he actually kind of factors into this story, right? Okay. So I was looking for cool stuff to do on the side. So my first job, um, very briefly, when I was back, I believe it was. So I worked with an enterprise software company. Okay. I knew right away that I didn't want to kind of. I mean, the reason I came back was to build something, sure, right? Yes, so I didn't yes, want to yes. be like a cog in a giant machine. If I was going to do that, I'd yeah. be better paid doing it somewhere else. Sure. So there was a company that um, they built software, but essentially, like, even though I was kind of early out from college, yeah. like, I connected with the founder of that company. Sure. Or, and um, essentially, I had a role. So they were doing a lot of, like, bespoke software development work. Okay. Enterprise um, stuff. Enterprise stuff. Yep. Like I think their clients included like NASA and like Holy you know DHL, shit, like crap. Really? Yeah, it was like wow. It was like legit stuff. Um, and it was all being built by like Filipino software engineers no and being way. yeah, and it was Where? being sold like around the world. How but I, we never I'm not sure if I can stuff. talk about it no, no, too no, much, let's right? Keep but it company X. But yeah, company example. X. Yeah. Right. Um, and essentially, but what they what they wanted to do and like this is how I connected with a CEO like my what we were thinking of sure. doing and building right was like how do we take all of this knowledge and kind of turn it into products that ah. we can sell as a company right so it wasn't just building stuff for other people anymore but productizing. actually productizing right. right and they they never done that like ever so I was the person me and like it was a super small team we were like three four people essentially that was the new vanguard of like creating like seeing what we had and it's right? hard i mean i'm trying to we were trying to do that with chatbot ph as well i mean mm. at the end of the day you know we want to be able to like like start rescue bot we created mm. that product to help uh to, to help the disaster relief and whatnot when, right when, uh 2016 but now when when clients stockpile you know at the end of the day there's higher stakes you don't want to disappoint a client absolutely and manpower is few and far between right you don't want to be like all right you best dev come here right. work on this product We're and it's also like balancing like what the cash cow is and what you know works Correct. versus you know how much do we invest in this like you know new thing that we're trying to do right Correct. so and it's still a, a hypothesis at the end of the day because it's not just like when you build a product it will start selling itself it's a whole nother business venture you have to put a product product manager in there pro- proper validation and absolutely whatnot, and pivots and whatnot so I mean I definitely yeah. it definitely felt like a big kind of software family very but at the same time like I was working directly with the CEO it was like and I'm glad like I've I actually had like a dinner late recently with some of the people I was working with in my first job yeah and like you know they were telling me that basically you know they're still doing it like some of the products that we kind of conceptualized at the time right and it was my first like 
real job, like not like an okay. X month internship, but sure, you know, sure. super. So like you're you're really yeah. in the grind. And yeah, I was I was actually like um, I think their youngest employee of the quarter. Nice. So I went through all of those like <laughs> HR kind of team building wow. stuff. So, but any but like that wasn't really like in the startup space. Sure. I started in the startup space in the Philippines at least, kind of doing that on the side. So okay. I met Earl, um, okay. and he was like, you know, hey, like. And I was I was just looking for like what the startup community was in the Philippines because sure. when I around the time I was like I'd left the U.S. right sure. or I decided that's to that's normal back. there yeah well, it, you know. no and it was the cool thing there right Correct. like my smartest friends were like yeah. you know especially the engineers right like they're all moving to Silicon Valley True. they're starting their own companies it wasn't cool there to go right. to like the multinationals and stuff that's Correct. like Correct. yeah that's not the cool so I was just yeah. sort of like trying to figure out like you know I was what the scene was like here yeah. and I was like connecting with or if like there uh, was a scene even <laughs> that's right and like the, the US alum clubs and things like that so I got sure. connected with Earl like someone like yeah through my I think I can't remember I think it's like my mom's friend also okay. or like mentioned to me like it was one of those tita conversations okay. where like you know like there's this new guy like working mm. at smart and he's right. uh, it's like summa cum laude and, right like, right see you know like <laughs> engineer and like blah 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 and like in tech and I was and he was like you're are you interested to like meet him and I mean I don't know I can't remember exactly when and how I met Earl but he basically told me like hey you want to kind of work or volunteer at the YC of the Philippines and wow. in, yeah that's that was his pitch like Shit. I remember and like I thought it was like oh YC of the Philippines right um and I show up like to my first sort of volunteer day slash session and it was okay. like empty like the office like no one was there like wow. the chairs were broken it was like yeah totally like white what walls, the actual like, fuck? yeah i was like <laughs> is this like real i, I thought i was getting like punk you know like and then like um and then i remember like i spoke with earl i spoke with diane and right, things like right. that and they were like oh then you volunteer who's also like so and so like here right, from the right, u.s right. but it was just like a a side thing I was doing, yeah. right? But it so. did not meet your expectation from how, like, a startup is. I like an- e- not at all, right? And it definitely <laughs> wasn't the YC of the Philippines. Um, it was, like, the first, and it was, they were just launching the very first um, call for applications for what's yeah. now, like, the international national startup right. competition. And, right? and Earl mentioned this in that episode, in episode three, that she was, like, in the first one, he didn't the first call for applications he only like less than a couple dozen and then he had to oh do a God. road show yeah because he, he you know there's that's how nothing, you got right? people yeah. right like yeah. it was so that was like a i mean a big part of like what i did also as a volunteer was kind okay. of mobilize this first competition it was like everything sure. like cutting flyers you know yep, like yep, yep. and you know doing the road show right and right. i mean i still Again, I it was it was fun, right, to sort of do some of the startup events and right. all those early raid the fridge things, right, you know. Right, but at right. the same time, geeks on a beach. But yes. at the same time, it was also like geeks uh, on a beach. yeah, geeks on a beach. <laughs> but at the same time, it was I was I think it became real for me when we closed that first startup competition because it was like. Mm. 700 or something 600 Holy something applicants shit. and i'm like wow. this is real like there are people again it's like it brought me back to like my pisai days yes. right where it was kind of like there are people out there they're just looking for an opportunity to yeah. you know to do something right like they but they just needed to see yeah. the light yeah exactly right. and you know it's like with the road show it was it was very high touch right like you sure. had like they had to see you they had to trust you like correct that was all part of it, right? So, but at the same time, right? Like the YC of the Philippines, that was the sort of <laughs> behind the scenes operation. Eventually, you know, okay, like the, now it looks yeah. so much better. Like, absolutely, yeah, it looks legit. It's, it's totally yeah. legit now. But like the first time, like I came to the door, like it oh, was, man. it was like I thought I was being punked for sure. <laughs> Earl, you got him. This Earl's, it's Earl's uh, ability to pitch. Yep. Yep. I was sold, man. Like. <laughs> okay, so from idea space, mm-hmm. how did just obviously, and Earl mentioned this during the last Kubo meetup, right? Yeah. That Kubo is our son or a daughter of idea space, yeah. plus some other co parents, per se. <laughs> when did Kubo come to life, or the idea of Kubo, and how were you the one who chosen to like lead this new 
this new tribe, this new tribe yeah, from mm. the nomadic. Like we settled down with the 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 fertile crescent, and now we off shoot. <laughs> We're ready for to like, new, um, yeah. you know, have our um, yeah. yeah. So I I joined Idea Space full time actually. Subsequent, so I was volunteering for sure. some time, but like I guess. I love doing it also and sure. at the same time like you know I was it was a very tight knit family at and you Ideal felt Space. like you were building something there and finally. I I definitely yeah. felt like I was building something there I could okay. see like that turning into like not just it wasn't just like a sort of casual movement anymore sure. it was becoming an industry right correct um, and yeah and I think one thing was also like it's I really believe that sort of the enabling environment makes such a huge difference. Like when you think about like the Amazon and Uber and Google and Apple and all these things, like they're all started by like one or two people, Correct. right? Yep. And I don't think they're particularly special people. They just also happen to be in a place where something that is like accepted or can thrive. Right, right? place, right time, mm-hmm. and right people. And right. I wanted that to also happen in yeah. Philippines, right? But anyway, I, I was... I ended up like eventually joining Idea Space full time. Like sometime, I think it was 2014 when yep, I yep. joined. Um, they were way more legit then, yep. right? Um, so it was it was an you had actual. A, you had a proper office and not mm-hmm. broken chairs, like new new for sure. <laughs> yeah, like a conference room and everything. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so and 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 a team, right? So yeah. I I joined them to head their biz dev growth and strategy like kind of vaguely defined okay. job but okay. you know but at the same time i think that's true for most startups like yeah, everyone's you wearing many everything. hats you wear, you you wear many hats you wear many hats title in there yeah right. but th- but the main kind of the key deliverable for me was how to like bring partners in to like okay. you know get cl- people to kind of work on the ecosystem side it wasn't necessarily working on the kind of awareness or working yeah. with the startups but like building the ecosystem right, right. and I think I have a, I've had a lot of conversations with you know at the time it was Earl and like the team right yeah. about how do we really kind of blow this up like you know at idea space like you know at, we were peaking at like you know thousands of like applications sure. but at the end of the day like at any given year we could support you know on a it was a stretch to do like maybe 30 startups yeah. right yeah but for this to legitimately be like a country thing that could make the difference yep. that we all wanted, right? Mm-hmm. Like it needed to be like a national program, you know? So th- that right. was like sort of the early conversations around it, right. I think. That was the inspiration behind what Kubo is now, I guess. Yeah. But um, so we started like, you know, just, you know, pitching it to anyone who would listen, right? Okay. Like, yeah, so, we, we, you know, let's have, like, a national innovation program, you know, like, okay. right, govern, right. like, we were working with DOSC already on, like, a few things. There's so. a Magna Carta that was being taught, talked about mm-hmm. back then. And there whatnot. were, like, roadmaps and, like, Philippine right, innovation, right. all these things. But, like, it's connect, I think, you know, the different parts of government didn't necessarily, like, understand the startup the way we understand it, right? Okay. It's a, you know, it's either it's an SME, like, any small business sure. is a startup, or, like, any research no, or invention yeah. is a startup, right? Depending on who you talk to. So, Correct. a lot of it was also just kind of getting that idea out there. But, I, um, you know, a, a turning point, really, was um, APEC, um, when APEC was hosted in Manila, like, slingshot. when Obama was here. Yeah, slingshot. That so... Is. I think that made it click for a lot of people. I don't True. necessarily know on their side how it yeah. happened, right? But from what I know, like, you know, some of the the government people, especially in some kind of leaders, even okay. the private sector, like the CEO summit people, right? Sure. They got exposed to, like, what, you know, it's a bit of FOMO, right? Like, what other countries were doing. And, like, why don't we have this, and right? And then ISA also got... ISA was there. Yeah, yeah with Jack Ma. center with Jack Ma and Barack Obama. Like, oh, That's crazy, right? Shit. Yeah. And <laughs> ISA was... I was proud a, to be in a startup. When I saw her, like, yeah. You she was, go, like, girl. represented. Yeah, right? represent. Like, kill him. And like, she was an, you right. know, she was an idea space story. Like, right. we met her at a boot camp, like, right. in Batangas, you right. know? So the first touch point, anyway, was there. So... Mm-hmm. You know, I think it started to, you know, we we've, we've, again, we just keep talking to whoever would, would mm-hmm. listen, but maybe I think that definitely catalyzed something sort of clicking for sure. people, right? Where it started to make sense what we were talking about. Correct. And yeah, so it sort of started to snowball from there, right? Mm-hmm. So um, Finally, we, boom, Big Bang happened. Boom, yeah. Boom, boom 2016, right? But at ah. the same time, it was an election year. So Shoot. there was like... Fear that like every everything that we'd been 
working towards just gonna fall was just going to fall apart. And hey, it did, right? So yeah. I think that's what you're... <laughs> okay, what was the, that, like you said, you said fall, fall apart. This is an election, presidential yeah. election. So everything's in government, per se. So this is a... Uh, Kubo is a partnership between DOST... DOST, DTI, from yeah. the public sector, and right. then... Idea space, of course, and J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan. So everything government side in terms of appointment can be coterminous. Mm-hmm. Depending because on, those yeah. were all like, these weren't like senators or anything, right? We were yeah. working with executive branch people and, yeah. you know, an election year could just kind of... Snap, like a like Thanos snap, snap. Like a Thanos Boom. snap. Boom, right? <laughs> all vanishing away because whoever's in the executive branch, majority of the time the appointees are dictated by... The president. Absolutely. Or the and this wasn't necessarily like a, you know, it wasn't like a people issue. As much as I really believe that, you know, this, this you know, having a startup is an opportunity for anyone to be able to succeed, I don't yeah. think it's necessarily seen that way by the broader public, right? Absolutely. It's not like a, you know, a feeding program or something that, that will get yeah. high priority in an election <laughs> year, you know? True. So, um, so yeah, um, so I don't like I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Cuba was initially envis- envisioned as this like massive center in Manila, like an okay. intramuros. It was like, wow. and the whole vision was it was gonna be this, you know, comp- like city redevelopment thing. It was no like way. insane, okay. like you know, very centralized kind of mm-hmm. at thought. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, that was one of the things that got Thanos, I think, okay. like, in election year, like, <laughs> yep. yeah, like, we're not Both. having more stuff in Manila, right? Okay. Like, the whole idea of, so, we actually wasn't even called Kubo, I can't remember, like, what the studies now, we went through, yeah. like, dozens of, like, names and things like that, but yep. eventually, when we found out what we were gonna end up with, so, DTI sort of hail married us, like, the project was gonna get killed, like, wow. yeah, and Earl if, was gone, imagine, by the way, like, that happened. If this, did, if, 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 so, you were Tony Stark, Technically, you're the one left. To <laughs> I was avenge, the one left, yeah. Right, right. You know, it's the end game now, cat. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm gonna give up the time stone, but you're the only one left to really push this through. And yeah, like, in, in a way, right. it was like you know, it wasn't like I chose. It. I'm I'm a re- pretty sort of private. I just want to get the work done, kind sure. of person, right? Like I wasn't super out well, what there. What made you stay, cat? I mean, on a personal note. I mean, I think. I still love what I do and I still see like a, the difference that I'm making. I feel like while that's still true and I still love it, like sure. I'm going to keep doing it, right? Yeah. But there were definitely times when I was like down, right? Like yeah. I'm like, you I know, mean, everybody left and they bailed. Everyone right? left, There's like, no yeah. Money. Every right. like people bailed, right? Like you know, Earl bailed. Um, right. The the space was gone. Like we had to kind of start from scratch in terms of what Shit. exactly we were doing. I mean, I can't you know be grateful enough, right, to the people that have sort of stuck it through with yeah. you know in this whole process. Without Kubo, again, this is just this, the the dominoes just start. The buck starts with you guys. Mm. You're home. A lot of the startups who are here. Will probably, you know, every single dollar or every single peso that we get to save and be surrounded by the people that, that, that we're here for, that has so much value, right? And if, we, if you did not exist, if you did not fight or at least pursued or pushed and Tony Stark your way, <laughs> then this wouldn't have happened. So in behalf of the startups, thank you, Kat. I appreciate that. No, Super welcome. Totally worth it. Like... Cat is our hero, so we should put a statue out there in, in, in the GTI. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Like, I, but I mean, you know, if if you do, if you want to give back, like that's you know, pay it forward, sure. right, to the startups and like make Kubo bigger. Like the vision for Kubo is always that there'd be. I mean, the the vision 2.0 when it became sure. the Kubo, mm-hmm. as opposed to like the. The original working title was like the National Innovation Hub of the Philippines. Or something okay, like that's that. too long. Yeah, like, great. Kubo, now it's a, now a, it's a cutie, ring to it. Now you know? it's a cutie Kubo, right? Like yeah. maybe, you know, you can start your own Kubo. It should, it should be everywhere, right? Sure. Like, and again, I want to thank you on a personal note again because this is the only place where you people you call people cuties. We are cuties. Yeah. <laughs> right, and nobody else in the world can call me a cutie because the, the, that's not an adjective they use. <laughs> it's <laughs> about making it fun too, right? Like, right. The, like I think the Kubo, like we're all we're we're a super young team, right? Yeah. We we don't take ourselves too seriously, although we we do do serious work. I'd like to think, Absolutely. but you know, we want to be the like vibe is different. We want to be working yeah. with startups, not sure. sort of like towering over them, kind of right. So. I think, you know, that's what being a cutie is all about. 
also. Yeah. Okay, now, Kat, let's take another quick break. Now, when we come back, let's talk about how you built it from Kubo now getting to here and how you build your team. And we're talking about hustle tips mm-hmm. you know, for startups who need to hear it because Kat is, is, is involved in so much. And then lastly, we're also going to be talking about what's, um, what's in it for them. What, what, what is Kat expected to do? So that, you know what, it's, it's a win-win situation. We, we do our shit as startups and we also help Kat achieve her metrics. All right, more, more of that after the break. Effective automation is the best way for businesses to stay competitive. And having a chatbot for your business lets you easily automate and optimize sales, marketing, and customer service in the digital age. Chatbot PH will build, train, maintain, and market your chatbot across all messaging platforms. Our team uses the latest AI technologies to enable you to better serve customers 24-7, 365. Set a meeting with us today. Message us now at m.me slash chatbotph. And we're back from the break. Uh, we're still with Kat Chan. Kat, thank you for the crazy... Still crazy having crazy. fun. Yeah, like... yeah, I'm still getting goosebumps. I didn't know that it went that bad with Kubo. <laughs> yeah, we had the blueprints and everything, and right. then boom. <laughs> and then kind of happened. Thanos happened. Right, but don't worry, we got Tony Stark, a.k.a. Cat, uh, Iron Lady. <laughs> Iron Lady, ooh. There you go, I like that. So that Has a good ring to it. Okay, yep. So, Kat, um, let's shed some light first. So, Kubo's now born. Finally, you're here. But you're th- Tony Stark. You didn't have a team. But before we do that, before you talk about how you built that team and what were the standards you look for, what's the metric you guys look at? We, we all know what startups fucking know. Like, we need to achieve, we need to be successful. But we all know that, and I need you guys who are listening to this podcast to understand that Kubo is not, it's not something that's just given to us. It's a privilege that we have this to succeed we don't know that again it can be thanos again from us <laughs> I so hope we not, need but... to make it work it needs to be a win-win situation and by doing that we need to understand what's what does kubo need to achieve so that we need the wins and whatnot now cat there's four horsemen right <laughs> and and, and uh, it's not of death of uh, life not of the it's, not the apocalypse yeah. of creation yeah right? of startup yeah. land yeah, so startup in, in, land. in kubo land in I kubo guess. land um, what's expected of you guys to you to consider, or at least on a yearly metric to, to, to make this work? I mean, for sure, like all our founding partners came in like with their own expectations okay. for, you know, how they see this going. But sure. I think everyone is motivated by a shared vision or sort of with a with a belief in the potential of the Philippine startup ecosystem, right? Sure. So I think our role as Kubo, like, is to create that enabling environment, so to speak, right? Like, we want the ecosystem in the Philippines to be worth something. Correct. Like, we need, it's it's really the startup's job, right? Yep. Like, it's yep. this is all for you guys, but also mm-hmm. you have to take it on in terms of, like, making it bigger, like, so... Their success is based on our shit, guys. Yeah, That's exactly. What it is, That's right? the, uh, bottom line. If we line. fuck up... No, in a year or two or whatever, Kubo's gone too. I mean, bottom. Right. I mean, there are numbers obviously that we track, right, right? right? Like, but all of it revolves around how well are the startups doing, okay. right? And like, what are those metrics? Just roughly, like, what what do they expect? So, uh, what what do they what we do? What do we need to do to help you guys out? I mean, you just need to keep building your companies, guys. Essentially, okay. things that you're looking at are like how much money is being invested into the ecosystem. Okay. You know, how many jobs are being created? Like, yes. how are you guys like, you know, it's all about thinking bigger too, right? Like, you know, thinking of how many Filipino products are actually out there, like, you know, making a difference in the world. So okay. like our tagline is Filipino startups changing the world. Yep. Right? And you know, that, that's, pretty, <laughs> that's pretty cheesy, right? right? But yep. at the same time, it's like, we believe that there's no re- absolutely no reason why there can't be like a unicorn or a product that's sort of changing the game that's Just coming a from of time. here. Yeah. Just and a of time. you know like we're going to do our part to make sure that like things aren't stopping you from achieving that but at the sure. end of the day you still have to kind of grab the opportunity as the founders. Correct. Right? And again, I, I want to give credit to you guys at least with chatbot a small win 
But without Cubo, it, that would have never, ever, ever happened. Thank you so much. Like no. that's, I mean, it, it's always super encouraging. I, I love hearing you say that. You know, it it makes all of the sort of hustle stuff worth it when you Correct. hear that you've made a difference in like no, you know the startup thank you, journey. Thank you. Right? Appreciate it. You you didn't just change uh, the life of, of of my team and whoever, but you changed my life. I'm pretty fucking like I've I have so much stuff now that eight years of grind like it, it all made it worth it. It, it, it losing a startup and now like but boom. it's it was your journey right like right. about how you learned and i don't know i think it's also a big part of like our what we're trying to achieve at kubo is also just make the ecosystem bigger i think when we started out like you know, a few years ago there were a right. few of us that it's always the same people right but right. you know you talked about the four horsemen i guess right. but the idea is really to have you know a whole kind of stampede right True. like to have more you know institutions people individuals and yeah. also like big groups kind of to really make an ecosystem right an ecosystem right. isn't just like a random kind of and just like raising a child you know yeah. raising a startup it takes a village to raise a startup and i needed help i needed an opportunity so little opportunities like oh there's a pitch here why don't you pitch and whatnot and then eventually just the the, the, the wind it snowballs start. right yeah like, correct so, so thank you for that now Kat, um, on, on uh, two things that I'm really curious on, because I, again, aside from creating this, you can't do it alone. You Absolutely. need the Avengers team. The Avengers you, team. You, you were able to assemble a really exceptional team. What was that about? And you're still looking for more Avengers at the moment, That's right? That's true. So. I, we are recruiting cuties now. Um, right. So yeah, absolutely. Like you know, it. There's no way anyone can do. Can really grow alone. Like I think you know, you, you sort of start out, and I think we we kind of had a chat about this, where right. you know, you start out like being kind of like a running back or something, yep, yep. where like you're grabbing Give me the a fucking ball. ball. I'll, yeah. I'll go. But then if you really want something to fly, you need to kind of you need yeah. to step back and be the QB and like yeah. you know chuck Pass the, the ball, ball at right. someone, right? Set, pos- set people up uh, set, in a position set it, to win, right? Set it, set, to set yourself up in a position to win and right. to grow, right? So maybe I'll do a different. I'll be a different Avenger this time. I'll there be Nick Fury, right? There you right? go, like, the director. Yeah, so... so scratching so, the eye by so it's, a <laughs> so it's not, yeah. It's not just about being the Iron Man or Iron Lady, right? Sure. But it's about, like, you know, bringing exceptional people in. I think, okay. again, the cuties are a pretty young team. So, yeah. you know, it's a lot of investment in, like, kind of... You know, we hire, like... We're one of the few people that, like, literally hire fresh grads and yeah. stuff like that. What do you so look for in cuties? What do I look for in cuties... I honestly I don't hire for like a job description. I yeah. look for people that have and it's cliche again, but like I like people yeah. that are smart that I feel like I can have a conversation with them and like mm. and also people that sort of can sort of articulate what they're passionate about or right. what they care about, right? right? So I think it's important that you want to excel and like do your best at sure. something and that you care about what you're doing and you know People that are, it's not, even if you're not like super experienced or skilled at sure. like one specific thing, okay. you know that like, you know, in the startup world, like you're doing something, you, you don't know what's going to happen like, right, you know, right. two, three months from now, right? So you should be kind of game to kind of do something else, sure. but still have that energy and sort of passion yeah, for it's it. Yeah, like right? blind, like a, a ball of energy and enthusiasm. And I think personally, when I hire, I also try to look for, a team that's very different from me. I think that's sort of, mm. I think that's, you know, and it, even if I'm y- a young leader myself sure. and like, I know that like, you know, sometimes I fall short maybe yep, as like yep. a mentor, as a leader, like, mm. you know, you're always questioning that, right? Yeah. But at the same, like, am I providing like the right, the right support, opportunities right. and support for my team, right? But at the same time, it's also like letting your team kind of figure things out and shine yeah. on their own, like, you know, I, I experienced this when I was still like kind of not in the leadership role, sure. but like where it was, you know, it was a big break for me in a way that, you know, I was allowed to do this yeah. Kubo thing, yeah. right? Like, and kind of figure it out for myself sure. and like suffer through it almost. Yeah, and make mistakes. Make mistakes, right. but at the same time know that like there's someone that's got your back at the end yeah, of the day. That it's okay. That it's okay, yeah. but that you should right. go for it. You should try yeah, it, keep, right? Keep going. So I think that's that's it's the same thing with a team, right? Like you know, people that want to do stuff, yeah. like and like my role is to kind of let them do it, like Correct. give them the space to kind of like a coach. Mm-hmm. Correct. 
Now, um, Cap, you guys are filling positions out. So again, she gave you a really good hint. So if you're listening to this, you want to join the Kubo team and be a cutie. Um, what, what, what positions are you trying to fill at the moment? So we're basically we're looking for like a team to help us with our incubator development program. We just okay. got this like project with a DOST. So I don't know if you guys know this, but right. there's like around the country there are incubators like physically up already Whoa. boom right and again we're talking about like a national movement mm -hmm. right so our i mean informally we're trying to kuboize it like you yep. know spread the gospel evangelize yep. to the rest of the country and like to be able to do that you need to be on the ground right like yeah. we talked about the road been shows everywhere like, last year like crazy yeah we did travel i think travel. it's like 12 cities and like Shit. i don't wow. know two months or something but right. we want to have like a more permanent presence like okay. everywhere and we need cuties to kind of help us grow out what we're doing and make right. sure that like you know, all of our incubators are sort of performing at like that five-star hotel level. Like a yeah. satellite. Yeah, so basically like, you know, it's all about sort of programs and people are interested in building new shit, like, right, you know, right, and right. working with startups, right? Like, okay. If that sounds like you, then like, I there super want to talk to you. So if they want to apply, where do they go? Um, on our Facebook, on our website, like there's sorts of online channels, right? Like right. for you to be able to like submit and also send out an email to us. Okay, now there's one Kubo cutie mm -hmm. that I want to highlight. And I've been wanting, she was supposed to join this podcast, but yeah. fortunately she got sick, so Tasha, get well soon. Um, here's one thing that I, you, you, you and Natasha, so if you're <laughs> Iron Man, she's Captain America, or if you're Iron Lady, she's Captain Marvel. You guys are very strong opinion women. And to be honest with you, on a personal level, uh, whenever I'm out there, you scare the living shit out of me. You're like, I don't want to fuck with these Us children. together. Yeah, like, nope, nope, Hide. nope. Hide. Ron, you're an asshole, but you can't fuck with these motherfuckers. Like, all right, these, these ladies are just like uh, the, the epitome of confidence and you know your shit at a very young age. You're both younger than me, right? But I, I'm, I'm curious about how Natasha fit into the picture. She just fit in well. Mm -hmm. Right, and she wasn't here from the start, but when she came in, like boom, perfect fit. And how you make that that dynamic work in relation to International Women's Month? Because again, I don't, and they say it a lot in 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 startup land. There's still a good imbalance, a good imbalance that women don't get to lead. But you guys are like spearheading this fucking movement with you and her. How does that work with you and Tasha? And how did she? like help you guys out because you guys are very strong women and i'm pretty sure there are going to be times where you guys are going to be conflicting and whatnot but you oh, seem yeah. to make it work <laughs> yeah so i mean natasha and i joke a lot about how we're basically the opposites of right. each other in so many ways right i mean um you know she's tall i'm not like <laughs> but no but um, i don't want to be in a picture like if natasha's there like i'm not Standing beside you, I look like a fucking midget. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and, you know, she's very extroverted. I tend to not, like, be and out be there. Right, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and, I mean, I, I, I do want to do give a quick shout-out also to Butch Mealy. Like, Butch, yes, yeah. of course. Because, like, you know, I think... He's a real Nick Fury. He's a yeah. real Nick Fury, right? <laughs> um, and, you know, it's like that he's also given the you know, the confidence for, you know, young women like sure. us to, you know, again, run with it and right. like take the lead. Right? Kill them. Right. So, but so, yeah, I mean, Natasha joined the team like very, relatively early on, but right. like, you know, so. But she was high profile. Everybody knew that she was grabbed, mm -hmm. what she was able to do there. So yeah, I remember like she, she was um, a speaker at like a startup grind or something. That yeah. was the first time I, because yeah. like, um. Like some of my idea space colleagues were hosting these startup grind yeah. events, and like yeah. she was one of the young women to watch out for and things like right, that. Right. So I'd heard of her, but like I was actually surprised to see her application. So she yeah. applied just like everyone else, like right. to for the for a job, right? And I was looking for an operations oriented person, Boom. right? You Boom. just got there, like, yeah, perfect fit. Exactly, right. like so, but you know, like operations, but not like in an old school factory way, but yeah. in a startup setting, you know, like who understands. And I, one, one thing not. that I remembered from okay. the first time I met Natasha was like how she was, she was also talking about it, like how their office had broken chairs or something. <laughs> <laughs> And it resonated with me, right, right? right? Like, you know, like you can deal that you can deal with an environment when it's still unclear or ambiguous, like wh how it's going to turn out or where it's going to turn out. Like, well, you, just like you need it to have like, some right, belief, right? right? Like a little bit of crazy belief slash a desire to execute. So like, 
Um, so yeah, she's very different from me, Natasha. Like, okay. you know, I'm I'm more of like a vision, like future kind sure. of person. Like, I want to think bigger, right? Like, you sure. know, national program. But right. like, hey, you want a national program, but what you have in real life is like, Boom. you know, two employees and like a space, you know, right. like. So, so I think when I met, like when when we started talking about like what her role would be at Kubo, sure. right? Like. I could tell right away that she was like, she was gonna be able to like kind of ground what we were doing and actually kind of get the train to start kind of right. running and hold people right? accountable and mm-hmm. still hold people accountable, right. right? Like, I mean, she's a get it done. I'm more of a like a perfectionist kind of person, you know. Mm. Like there, there's so many aspects where we're different, but I think you know, I think I. People ask us sometimes where it's like, you know, am I not threatened by Tasha or yeah, like, yeah. you know, whether physically or other, whatever. <laughs> right? but, um, but it's uh, the, the honest answer is no. Right. Because it's yeah. like I, I see I recognize like the areas where I need help and I, you know, or where um, where I'm different. Right. Sure. And like I was really looking for someone that would be compliment complimentary yeah. to like what. As, but again, the important thing is like that there's a shared vision, right? Yeah. That at the end of the day, we're all going the same to the direction. same direction. And yeah, absolutely. Start, right. And like, you know, none, none of this would be happening, I think, if not for the fact that, you know, we got this team together and that sure. Nat- with Natasha especially also. Ah, right? And credit like, where credit is most Absolutely. Injured. You guys just run this well. I mean, I can't imagine, like, we started with, like, our first couple of, like, open houses or whatever it was, like, a mess. So now we do, like, over 100 programs a year. Yeah, like, you know, like, hats off to Natasha and making sure that happens, right? So uh, You guys, you, you too. Again, like what I said, like, you you make this, you we make it look easy, to be honest. <laughs> we that's butt heads, is. but at the same time, I think we know where each of us, like, you know, has right. our strengths. And that's mutual right? respect, And there's, at, yeah, absolutely, I believe so. And that's so important. That's, that's correct. Now... Kat, let's talk about the other side of the fence. So we now know what's it like for you guys. They, they, the four horsemen have different metrics. Mm-hmm. So basically, to cut it short, we just got to do our shit, startups. So if you're listening to this, you, you got to learn. Think and you, bigger, grow, right? right? Grow your businesses. And don't be afraid to ask for help. To be honest, who was there? And you don't know the type of resources that they can actually help you and point you to the right direction. And we want to ask. help, right? Exactly. But you ha- that's the thing. You have to you have to ask. We are right. not going to run the business for you, Correct. but you have to do it, right? Like, But you have to take that step. I can't remember how many times I fucking bugged you for shit. Like, hey, <laughs> Tasha, you guys... Or, hey, uh, Kat, you guys have shit. Like, you know, just gotta be makulit about it. Makulit. Sorry about that. Right. Now... Tasha, I mean Tasha. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we just, bad. just had that section. <laughs> sorry, so. my bad. Cat. All right. Now, Cat. From, yeah, from soon, start, Tasha. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, by this time, you're already good. Cat, um, from from a point of view of startups, you 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 can't really discriminate. You're you're open to everyone. No, we have to work with what we have. Here, yeah, whoever's here. Correct. What is what what's still missing? I mean, you've been exposed to so many. I mean, there's different stages. There's mm. people that's been there, done that several times. Right. What in in just to sum it up, in order for startups to succeed, what would be your tips for them to take that next jump from ideation to you you run the whole gamut, right? right. From idea all the way to yeah, series stage A, of whatever. Gnostic, yeah. Right. So what what what. And at least in, in tips and what can you share and what would you uh, suggest that they do in, in the light of Kubo so that they can actually take advantage of it? I mean, I, we get asked all the time, like, you know, what's missing in the ecosystem, right? Yep. And like, you know, there's some argument for it's a funding issue and like, you know, sure. people can't afford to take risks or quit their day jobs kind of thing. Yep. Um, you know, some people think, there just aren't enough. And I sort of do ascribe to this view a little bit. Like okay. you kind of, you need that density to be there, right? Like sure. it, it's it's still very much a probability game. Like a lot, like yeah, luck has yeah. a lot to do with, you know, things. It so is, it is. Yeah. I think, again, to the extent we can try to ease that transition to help you take the leap and just do it. Like yeah. there's no way you're going to know unless you try, right? But like, I guess my advice for founders that are already like, have already decided to take sure. that step, right? You know, 
this is super simplistic, but you just need to go for it. Like Take you need the to fucking leap, yeah, jump. You need to. I mean, you need to work hard, right? Like you need to, and you need to work smart also, and like, sure. but you need to commit, right? Like sure. I think, um, a lot of what what, I, what I'm seeing is missing is we don't really have enough founders that are thinking kind of bigger already, or like mm-hmm. thinking of. Um, and and really doing and taking the steps right like uh, going through the rejections pitching True. their product True. building it out right it's always sort of i get i hear a lot of excuses sometimes for like why mm. we haven't launched yet why we're not like right. fundraising but at the same time it's like you just have to do it right and yeah. like you need and you need to learn from that process like we we talk a lot about you know like how important it is to sort of validate and get out there but sure. like there's no way to know unless you you take the leap, right? Yep. So you gotta keep pushing too. You need to, you need to keep pushing, right. and you know if that pushing leads you to the conclusion that hey, right. I'm doing something wrong or this is like not gonna work out, sure. like then also make that clean break. You know, stop doing it. But you're yep. not gonna know if you're in limbo. And I think that's right. a lot. That's a, that's a big way to describe like how our ecosystem in the Philippines is in okay. general, right? Like we're sort of in limbo. People are holding their breath, waiting to see right. if like wait and see like dude, like you know, yeah. Philippines second largest market after Indonesia, yeah. right? Like all this talent. Like we're what's gonna happen in terms of yeah? But yeah. like. It's not about like it's not about just waiting and like mm-hmm. hoping that like all of the demographic you know sweet spot yeah. things work out right. You have to grab it. You have to do it. So. Right. And potential means nothing if work does not come in mm-hmm. to realize that shit. Absolutely, ideas yeah. are cheap, right? True. Like, execution is more Execution is everything. Is. All right, now, Kat, um, any last words for 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 women? I mean, you. You just guested a couple of uh, days ago or a couple of weeks ago with with, with uh, ANC with the Girl Boss or the Women's Founder Movement. Yeah, we're Startup guess. Pinay. Is startup a, Pinay. Yeah, there is a startup for Pinay. Women's okay. Month. Yeah, so can I, if you're a female startup founder, you can yeah. definitely sign up for that. So sure. again, quick plug. But um, <laughs> but no, yeah, like you know, it's it's really like I re there's still a huge again gap between like yeah. how many women are out there right and yeah. i'm not gonna be the person to say like it's easy to be no. a lady yep. in this industry or trying to be a leader right like yeah. I-, I can i can think of all the times where like you know it's either you're too passive in which case everyone thinks you're like the secretary and like where's your boss sure. right to the you know the other version of this which is like you know you're too bitchy and yeah. like <laughs> whatever right like the dragon he, there's no yeah. way to get it right and i mean yeah. and i can imagine and i'm i'm not like a mom or i don't have a family sure. but you know like a ho- whole other like set right, of expectations right, right, right. that you can never meet right but like you know again it's about just running with what's there right like i think what i've learned is um you know in this whole kind of journey right is it's not you know you can't wait for people to sort of give things to you or for things to just work out or hope that it works out you just have to kind of start doing it and like deal with it day to day not this not to discount the value yep. of having like a long term vision right. but you have to do something now right and like you know my our ugly kind of office also eventually <laughs> turned, you know, like, but things you, will just get the, yeah, better the too. things yeah. or the things that you had on paper that, you know, like the proposals you wrote or all your frustrations, mm-hmm. right? Like that's still going to happen, but yep. you're, it's not going to move forward unless you actually, yep. you know, take Inertia. it. Yeah. <laughs> you need to take it, right? You need to take these opportunities. Right. So someone's got to move for it to move. Right. You and know. you need to like, I mean, of course, and you know, let's all kind of support each other. Also, Correct. Right? And that's what I like about the women movement. You know, that, that sometimes, and, um, uh, Abby mentioned this, that the girl boss movement, uh, that she, she, she's trying mm. to advocate. I was like, you know, you just got to hold each other's hand and like walking through because empathy is very powerful. Like, and ah, are you going with and like oh, it's yeah. not about, it's not about sort of taking each other down or like you know being threat like yeah. I don't know it's like it's been I think the sort of boys club in sure. is pretty kind of well established as a thing right yeah. but like there's nothing wrong also with a girls club and also a boys and girls club like, but but at the same time it's it's about finding a community that is supportive of what you're doing and you also like being supportive of others and like 
helping other people succeed, right? It's Bayanihan, right. it's Kubo, that's our whole thing. There right? you go. So. Now, Kat, um, unfortunately, as much as I want to ask you a couple more questions, <laughs> we have ran out of time, but Kat, please do invite them over with your new stuff in Kubo and how can they uh, be part of the community here in Kubo? So, everything is here for you, right? You, right. and by you, I mean startups to yeah. sign up. So, Please go to www.kubo.com.ph. It's all free to like sort of, and that's the first step, right? Yep. To be part of the Q community and there like join this movement. So thank you so much, Ronster. Oh, for thank you, Kat. Me. Appreciate it. And again, I, I had a blast talking to you and discovering a lot of the, the stuff that we never got to talk I talked to you a lot, but we never got to talk about this. But again, it's a pleasure having you on the show. I hope you had fun. I did. It Again, was awesome. This is Hustle Share, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.